Okay, so let's uh, four o'clock on the nose. Who we have is in person. We have um, Andy Sturgeon, Joe Feely, myself, Mark, and Julie. And out there in Zoom land, we have Leslie, Angela, Scott, and anyone else? Not yet. Oh, Not yet. yet. We got it. Oh. I think Kirk is planning to be here. I I just sent him Julie's Zoom link that I think he may have he may be trying the old one. Am I? Are you getting feedback from me? You, you sound good. So, so far, so good. So good. Okay. Whoops. Okay. So that's Joe. Yeah. I'm so muted. You're gonna get muted. I muted you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank All right. Hello, Kirk. Hello, Dan Flagg. I think we're just right to get started. Um, I know Andy Muncy intends to join us, and we'll hope that, yep, there he comes. Hello, Andy. And I'm sure Rick is planning to join us, Rick Schultz. So why don't I just, um, I mean, now we know everyone who's here. Andy Muncy is taking notes. Thank you. So I have a question about that, Susan. Um, typically, when I'm taking notes for our regular meetings, there's an agenda, and I use that as a starting point uh, to generate the minutes. But I don't see an agenda uh, in, in the Google Drive for today's meeting. Is there one? Date. Um, there is, I believe, an agenda because we posted it on the town website. Just look for 20, yeah. 20, um, oh, two. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking 2023 02 minutes agenda. I don't see one for today. Oh, wait, oh, maybe wait. it's, oh, there is one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to scroll down further. Oh, and you, you're sounding like you're doing fine. Now, who else is unmuted? Is Andy Sturgeon unmuted? Not even on. Nope, you're not on. Okay. Okay, so why don't we, um, the, the, the thing that we've at, all of us have been engaged in today is to the best of our ability, reviewing the how many, Leslie, 76 pages of this document that has been so exciting to receive. Um, and it's a live Adobe document where we could go in and ask questions or make comments. And I believe at least three of us, maybe more at this point, have done that. And hopefully, um, are, are you all getting feedback or not? I am, yeah. yes. I know, because even though I've been at office, it's so. Okay. So we just want to have it on that screen. So. Okay. So, uh, okay. Doesn't matter. Is that okay? So, um, does it make sense? To you, Leslie, for us to just kind of turn this over to you based on, you know, your sense of what it is that we have concerns and questions about. Um, it's a lot of pages, but when you look at all those pages, the comments were not, it seemed to me, not overwhelming. And um, I'm hoping that it, they gave you collectively, the comments gave you a sense of where we are. Um, you know, as a as a group, um, it feels like it's been a circuitous route, but we've come a long way. <laughs> um, and and this is you know this is a, a wonderful point to um, to get some additional clarification and information. So is that okay with you to just kind of turn that over in terms of the comments that we have um, registered? Sure, sure. Um, I'd like to take a little bit of a step back and say, okay, so um, this document is a result of my working with Kate. Uh, first of all, I think I don't think Kirk and I have met Julie. Is that Julie sitting next to you? Hi, Julie. <laughs> nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, Julie. <laughs> um, as as I'm talking about your um, predecessor 
Kate. I'm uh, so Kate and I worked together to get this structure. Um, we were the the focus was to simplify it. Um, I just want to warn you that in the simplification process, there may be some details that um, have been sort of just dis it, the decision was made that we wouldn't regulate those kinds of things. Um, so I just want to sort of say that up front because this is not a typical structure for me. And so there may be some things that, um, you know, maybe located in other locations, for example, like, for example, um, drive throughs and other accessory structures used to be in the building types, um, but we pulled those out and they're now in an accessory uses section um, that you guys don't have um, because it hasn't been fully, it, it will apply to the town as a whole and it hasn't been fully sort of vetted yet. Um, so just so you know, that's the, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I tried to include the pieces in this um, sort of packet that um, mainly apply to Thompson Center. Um, so the, the zones and the building types within those. Uses is included, and that's part of the reason why Kirk is here today. It is not also not fully vetted, but the table I felt like was at least good to kind of get you a little bit further in terms of understanding the zones. Building design only applies to the tops and center zones, um, and it has been um, it's been reduced down to just sort of the key pieces. Um, and I think Julie has some questions about procedures and approvals for those kinds of things that I think we're going to have to just kind of put to the side for this call um, until that is sort of figured out. Um, and then definitions and measurements are included um, because there it's it's sort of a bigger it, it applies to the whole code, um, but all of the top some center definitions and measurements have been put put in there. So it's they may be sort of hidden a little bit in there, but um, so if we could today talk about, um, so I've been through all of the comments and I've um, just replied to all the comments today. Um, so um, I'd like to talk about some of the biggest picture items first. And then if we have some time to get down into the details, I think Joe had a whole lot of questions about specific numbers and details and, you know, and, you know, materials and things like that. And, you know, none of those numbers were just sort of pulled out of my hat. They were all based on measurements um, from Topsum. So um, if we have time to get to those, then we, then we can. But I, I would rather talk about some of the bigger issues or bigger questions um, that are out there. Um, so Andy, I just sent you an email of my discussion items list. I don't know if that'll help you. It's just a little word document that I had created for myself. So oh, in, was that in, sent in to your my, email, my Gmail, probably, okay. sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it, you, it, it, it's probably not that big of a deal. It's, it's four items. So one is I would like to talk about the annex. That's probably the biggest question that I saw throughout the document. A little bit about the zone regulations, um, the regulations kind of by zone. Um, the choices of some of the building types in the different locations, which kind of ties back to that annex question. And then if we have time, we'll get to some of the building type details like glass and um, minimum heights and building segment widths and building widths and roof types and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen, I don't, is it um, projected there like on the yes. wall or something? So it's it's big for you guys, okay. Um, okay, so these are the highlighted sections that were included. Um, you can see accessory uses and structures is in here. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of dive into um, the first question. And, and part of this is some of my discussion with Kate as well. Um, so you can, can you all see this sort of? Yes. Um, so the, the comprehensive plan does not get into 
a lot of detail about what the expectation is in the annex. Um, it's not one of the catalyst areas, right? And so we sort of had to figure out where we were coming from. Now, um, the map of it now includes, this is Kate's map that she did. Um, so it includes both schools um, and it includes the Navy annex area, the Navy housing area. It also includes some commercial down here on Maine. Um, and then it includes some, um, you know, sort of industrial locations. Um, there are three ways that we can address um, what's going on in the annex area. Um, the reason that I called it primarily residential is because the two schools are kind of a hub there. And you probably don't want to continue to surround it with you know, commercial, it probably wants to be mainly residential, plus you need residential. So that is why I think Kate was always saying that the annex area needs to be primarily residential. And primarily means, you know, primarily, not all, but primarily residential, right? I think we discussed maybe pulling these parcels out and applying them to the upper village. Can you see where my cursor is going right here? Um, just because they are fronting on Main Street and they are similar, well, they're, they're not really, but but they we could apply the upper village to these parcels, I think, without a problem. And that would kind of pull them out of the annex. So then, did you have a question? Did I hear a question? Um, can you say those three parcels along the road, I think the fourth parcel is, should be one that you need to look at too, the one with the frontage there. This that's, one? A, that's a that's a precast of Maine, which is a, a company that's been there, I, I don't know how many years, but- uh, That's the industrial one. You know, or, I mean, that's the industrial use, right? It's an industrial use right now, you know? Um, so I'm just saying you might want to look at that too. I, I don't know what the smaller lots are. One I think is vacant and one is the uh, motor vehicle. One side. Isn't that one a house? Also? I'm not sure if one of them's a house and I can't I really think we took those out. Further up. That's further up. Okay. I'm just saying you might want to take a closer look at that. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so um yeah, there's the motor vehicle. I think it's Napa Auto Parts, the the um, motor vehicle, and then maybe a vacant parcel. Um, Go to the next one after the vacant parcel. Right. Um, so I think that's part of a bigger discussion about the annex and where Kate drew those lines that we should talk about. Absolutely. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's moving so slow. Um, so part of it is that some of these parcels that used to be in the Topsom Center area have been removed um, for being industrial. Are you are you guys hearing me okay? I feel like I'm I can hear you. Okay. Um seems like it's too much for my my internet. Um so I you know, I think that the idea of some of these parcels being within the annex may be one of our issues. Um, because when we're talking about creating zoning for, um, for an area, the annex has kind of become an anything goes area. Um, any, anything from industrial warehouse to housing, to maybe some corner commercial. And I feel like we wanna maybe figure out what we want it to be. That that would be the way that I would initially address it. Leslie, I think it's just the way we've grouped things that makes it feel that way. I, I think this is also what Andy was saying. The part of this that goes um, to the entrance to the middle school up around Wicked Joe's, yeah, uh, 
if you took out the part that is Wicked Joe's and precast, yep, and then all of the things that front Main Street, that is more like Upper Main Street. The rest is schools and residential pretty much only. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if, if we want to do that, we can change those lines. Um, Julie, I don't have, I don't think I have the GIS that Kate did for this, um, but it is something that we might want to modify. I mean, I can, I can, you know, create something new, but um, I don't know if it's easier for you just to modify it from what you have. Um, but that, that if we do want to remove that, I think that's a question that we need to ask. Do we want to remove those industrial, more industrial like parcels? I don't think Wicked Joe's, is that right? Wicked Joe's. I don't think that that's as much of an issue as this site. This site looks like it's empty uh, behind the school. Um, yeah, but it's used by the school, I would generally say. There's a retention pond and it's not usable or it doesn't really seem okay. usable. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's part of the school. Thinking about removing that from the Topsom Center zone completely, or are you thinking of sticking it down with the upper village? That doesn't make sense either. So you're thinking about removing it. Well, I'm just saying it doesn't fit with the annex. Yep. It fits with these parcels to me more than it does with anything. About keeping it in there was, I mean, those three parcels at least, is we wanted to sort of have, um, you know, the continuity up Main Street until you, you know, through the high school area um, with the kind of appearance that we're aiming for. Um, so I, I kind of, we've boxed ourselves into a pickle. It, is there a reason it wouldn't? You know, be basically be an extension of Upper Village, just extending the green line over. That's what I think. Yeah. Just extending it up here. Okay. Well, let's let's hold that discussion for that. Yep. That makes that makes sense. But we need to talk a little bit about the workshop warehouse right. building type yep. and those uses as well. So so okay. So that makes sense. So if if the annex becomes sort of this area. Um, then that that is primarily residential. And I just want to talk a little bit about the ways that the annex can develop. I just um, want to, sorry, I just want to clarify it. I would say it's primarily school use with some residential. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I can just change that definition. Um, but the, the hope is that, well, I guess a lot of these parcels actually are school use, aren't they? Um, so the way that anything can develop in this area um, on these parcels is if it is four acres or more, then it would use the MPD. Um, how familiar, did everybody get a chance to take a look at the MPD? Um, I did. It's like really scrolling slowly. I'm going to say I looked at a general overview, but not, I don't have all the details memorized. Okay. No worries. Um, oops. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, I'm going to. So the MPD is all about new streets um, and a mix of building types. Um, within the development. So anything that is four acres or more, this gives you um, a sort of template to create new open space, new blocks and streets, um, but also to um, incorporate your mix of building types um, into the area. And um, that's, what, that's what this part is illustrating. Um, and so the idea is if there's an, a parcel that is more than four acres, 
then they could very easily do a village building with a commercial use up closer to the street and then multi-fam- uh, multifamily or housing residential um, in the rest of the parcel. So that is sort of guidance for them if they've got a larger parcel on how to you know, create a kind of neighborhood of different buildings and different use and different building types. So that's one way that the annex um, parcels can develop. And again, there's few of them, but the other way is if there is a parcel that is less than four acres, um, we have been really flexible um, about what building types can be used. So if you go back to the building types table, Um, In the annex, you could do a village building with commercial uses, you could do a general building with office uses, you could do a general building with residential, a row building with residential. Um, And then we have also allowed the workshop warehouse building, which I have highlighted in pink to discuss within the annex, which I would propose that we would remove um, at this point, but we can talk further about the workshop warehouse. But the, the point is, if you have a parcel that's smaller, then you can do any of these building types within it. Um, There is no guidance for where they go on a parcel that's three acres, which is actually a pretty good sized parcel. Um, But because we had discussed changing the trigger for new streets and blocks to be four acres or more, then that allows those three acres to develop with just one building or with multiple buildings on it. Leslie, could you say just a little bit about that decision about changing the trigger from three to four acres? Because that, I'm not, did that happen with Kate? Um, I believe we had some discussions about that, but we also, Kate and I also came to that kind of conclusion. So just in, in the process of measuring some of the different parcels that were out there and whether or not we felt like, um, because you, don't really have a block structure right now. And the block structure probably needs to be a little bit bigger than it would be in a more urban place like Brunswick. Um, But, you know, that that sort of shifted it up a little bit. But when we started looking at at larger areas of five acres or more, it didn't seem like enough. Um, Plus, we have we do have um, this sort of structure built into the building types or the, you know, like building groups, which is in your comp plan of kind of doing a whole series of buildings on a site um, around some open space. So that also allows you to do, you know, a development on a larger parcel that you might not do in a place like Brunswick or something similar. Okay. Um, We have a question over here. Leslie, this is Mark. I don't know if you can see me because of the way we're set up, but Ham mm-hmm. Drive has most of the frontage of the pieces that go through the annex. So are you, and right now it's all pretty much, if it's anything, it's residential and part of it's a road, Liberty Circle, where there used to be residential, there's nothing there. Are you saying there needs to be a building on the front of Canyon Drive that's the two or three stories high and then they can kind of do other things behind it, but there needs to be like a commercial building on the front? There doesn't have to be, but if they choose to be, to do it on, um, like, okay, let me just. In the residential. I'm not sure. I think the planning board is here mostly to listen, but I I would like to chime in on this parcel. Um, You know, the MDP sounds great, and it sounds great to be able to apply to different areas. But when we're talking about the annex area, the only place that's really going to apply is that front area that we talked about before that is on Main Street. It's kind of bounded by Main Street, can Eagle Way, and behind the high school property. Because, you know, 75% of this land here is either school land, which is probably 50% of the land, and then the other 25% is that area up the residential area between the middle school and the highlands. And that residential area, I, I'm pretty sure we want to continue to be residential. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a it's a great place for workforce housing, for um, you know high um, uh, like unit um, you know focus density up there, uh, particularly because the schools are there. You know, 
Um, and really, in this case, the the part of the annex where where the MDP or any of the um, the uh, the I don't know the, what are we calling the uh, the types of buildings. Um, anyway, the the approach that we're using would just be that upfront area. Um, doesn't seem like the rest of the area is is even um, needs to be considered for that. So this is not a developable parcel. This is part of the high school. That's my understanding that that's yes. owned by MS, MSA D75. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So I think I was looking at these two parcels here, mostly. So that was my clarifying question, I guess, is to ask. I mean, I would tend to agree with Scott. I think we yeah. maybe don't in there, but I was just trying to understand if that's what's proposed. You, you can see laid out here. I, well, you can't see my cursor, but you've got you know you've got the, all those uh, athletic fields, the baseball field off to the the northeast there, or the upper quadrant. I mean that is all school land. All those open areas are school land. That's school. That's a practice field. School land. So it's just this. Yeah, it's just this up the, the upper area, and that is all part of uh, work. You know, expectation would be uh, higher density housing. So Scott, are you suggesting that we not include that area where we might invite higher density housing in this Topsom Center form-based codes part of the project? Well, I mean, I, I think, I don't know where we're going with density. I think we wanna have higher density up there, but I'm not sure that um, the form-based code Neat, you know, that's going to be more towards the area closer to Main Street for, for this top some annex that is outlined here. Um, I mean, the the area up top is going to be primarily residential if we want to do form based code as far as, you know, townhouses versus the larger apartment buildings, et cetera. That's great. Um, but as far as I don't, you know, I, I I would say you don't need a, a large building right on the road. You know, you, it doesn't have to be that there. Um, whereas maybe that's what we do want on the the, the end of Can Am Drive when it, when it approaches Main Street. Yeah. So so the MPD would allow that to happen. Any any and all of what you've been talking about. What it does do is we could remove the commercial buildings from it, but what it would do is it would allow for example if you know this whole area were to redevelop this this all of the navy annex housing were to redevelop um and you know maybe this house were to redevelop you could do a commercial small commercial building like the coffee shop here and then multifamily everywhere else um, or a small commercial building here and residential everywhere else. It would allow the flexibility. It doesn't require that. And in fact, it limits, um, and we can even limit it further. It limits how much commercial you can do um, within that area um, if we if we so choose. I think I think I already did that. Um, so the idea is that, it, it right now the annex is um, I think it allows too many building types for it to have a clear sense of what the purpose is and just listening to all of your discussion I think we should be removing the workshop warehouse building from it and I think we should um, the the village building as a commercial building is on, should only be allowed with the MPD and only be allowed maybe with um, as a limited amount of area or we can leave it the way that it is and somebody could come in and go ahead, Angela. Leslie, I just say this depends so much on what areas we're talking about. Like, I feel like if we are redefining the annex as just the schools and that residential behind, I just really don't think it's a fit for any commercial development that we don't want traffic driven by the schools. You know, it's, it's a very busy school area. Kids are going out to gym class all the time. There's sporting events. I just, I don't believe just me that we want to drive traffic in that sort of area. I think we really want it to be residential. 
I think this area off of Main Street, you know, including where Precast and Wicked Joe's and along Main Street, that's an area that could be developed in a whole bunch of different ways um, that is totally different from the school uses in residential in the annex. Okay. Does everybody agree? Makes sense. Yeah, Joe was saying it makes sense yeah. to him. The question is, if we envision the redevelopment of all of the annex workforce housing, just for instance, does it make sense to have a corner shop in there, like a, a corner grocery, you know, like a, not a gas station, but a little Rusty's, like a place to go get some whatever. I don't know. And if we, if we don't want that, um, I bow to those who know that area better. Well, I, I won't weigh in on whether we want it or not. I will weigh in that the folks um, in the Highlands would come out against it. They were very concerned when, when we completed the road uh, connecting the Highlands to Can-Am. That was a, a, a pretty good uh, sized crowd at our planning board meeting. Um, though, though that had been in the subdivision plan from the beginning. Um, and you know, they, everyone there is concerned about people using a shortcut. If there's a store there, there may be more concern. Um, and, and Angela had already mentioned the fact that, you know, it's pretty busy there uh, for, for the, uh, the schools, so. This is our Highland Green. Highland Green. Okay, got it. So it sounds like there's no opposition to that shift. Well, pro provided that we're talking about redefining the boundary. Right. Yes. Um, do we, okay, so I, I think that that helps that I also think that what's really good about that is it essentially gives you a multifamily district that you could use in other locations if you wanted to, um, you know, so I, I don't know, I, I again, I, I know that you guys specifically created these zones with their names um, to be, you know, locationally <laughs> recalled. Um, but we might want to consider naming it something other than the annex if 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 it is that kind of a multifamily zone, or, or we can just leave it. But um, that was the one zone where we actually realized it would be nice to give this a different, better name. Mm -hmm. So let's stay open on that one. I think there's a familiarity with all of the others, but that one because we're sort of shifting in terms of what we're doing there, um, it deserves, I mean, is it, is it, yeah, it's, I forget what, it's, it's called something more than the annex right now, but it's, um, it deserves a better name. <laughs> um, okay, great. Um, so moving, moving along, um, I think let's talk about, um, the location of first let's talk about the location of the suburban storefront building um, because I think then that will feed into the discussion about the workshop warehouse building. Um, so right now um, it is a building type that is allowed in the Topson Fair Mall area and is indeed much of what is in the Topson Fair Mall area although we are trying to kind of um, manage the design or the layout of the buildings a little bit more than what most of those sort of strip centers are, especially on the kind of south side of Thompson Fair Mall or southeast side of Thompson Fair Mall um, Drive. Um, so what we've done here is we've only allowed the suburban storefront building if it is approved by the planning board. And then we have allowed it to occur not only in the Topson Fair Mall area, but also in the Upper Village and on uh, in the Crooker District. The storefront, the suburban storefront building differs from the traditional storefront. So the traditional storefront, let me just show you the images. Okay, so this is a traditional storefront building, you know, kind of old school Main Street style building, right? The suburban storefront building could be 
could be two stories, but it's not required to be two stories. Um, it can be a single story, single use building. Um, the way that we, um, well, actually, no, we lost the layout um, in the simplification process. Um, so it does not um, have any uh, front street wall. Well, let me see. Oh my gosh. It does have front street well. So it only has 55%, which means that along the main streets, like Topham Fair Mall Road, um, it only has to, it can have 50, 45% parking and 55% building plus the side yards. So it is a kind of a, it's kind of a combination of a strip mall and the traditional storefront building. We're trying to kind of migrate it to the street so you have some street frontage and make it a little bit more friendlier, but it is also meant to accommodate, you know, automobile traffic. It is, it is meant to be that kind of single use, you know, drive to it and use it and then get back in your car and go somewhere, somewhere else. Um, so my question is, is this an end? We have also talked about the suburban storefront being kind of the building type where drive-throughs would be allowed, um, where we wouldn't allow those in the traditional storefront building. So my question is- Clarification, you said this is only Crooker and Thompson Fair Mall, or was there another district? Yeah, um, and in the, the upper village. Yeah. I'm not sure about the upper village for things like drive throughs for just my own personal. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So the traditional storefront building has a minimum of two stories. So the question is, and you know, that could be a bigger question, but um, if, if we're thinking single use building, um, single story, single use building, um, is that something that you would want to occur in the upper village? Especially, you know, think about the area that we just took out of the annex um, along Main Street. That we're going to add on to the upper village. Yeah. Yeah, this is where that area is problematic, right? Because also, if we're just adding that to upper village, I think we have to retain the light industrial in there and we don't want that in all of the upper village. So this is gonna be an issue, I think. Yeah, so let's, let's kind of just put that to the side for the time being and let's just talk about what we expect to happen along Main Street, you know, the frontage along Main Street there, um, as well as these other areas. Um, you know, along Monument Place. So we have extended the Topsom Fair Mall zone here. Um, but once you get to sort of behind um, the town hall, it, it is much more that kind of upper, meant to be that upper village feel. Shouldn't it be this? And that includes the lot across from the town hall. I think stop us if that were ever to move. Um, and what's the the border of that? What's the where where the upper village meets the middle village? What's the border? Is that Volvo? I'm sorry, say that again. Where do the upper village meet? Oh, here? Is that the Volvo? I think it is. I believe so, yeah. And then the vacant lot next to the Volvo must be the one of the, right about one of the apple trees. Yeah, I think what's feeling challenging about this, Leslie, just so you know, is that this community has spent lots of time and planning efforts to plan around Main Street and a certain feel along Main Street which isn't the same feel that we as a community care about on Monument Place. So um, this feels challenging to group those all together. So just um, 
I hear you, but I feel like the the comprehensive plan kind of um, that's quicker. Hold on. Mm. Sort of illustrated that as the same. So that was kind of my understanding, right? right. Well, I don't see any single story fast food drive through. This is a very different feel to Main Street than that. Right. Okay. So you're saying n don't allow the suburban storefront in the upper village. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I misunderstood. Or, or don't allow it on Main Street and it may be moved the Thompson Fair Mall area up monument yes i agree with that ah. what does that sound like leslie um i kind of i mean i don't know do you want do you <laughs> <laughs> do you want my professional opinion or do you want my um my opinion about basically where we are in the process here <laughs> but two different things <laughs> two different things um I, I think monument place is a wonderful opportunity to have walkable main street you know right by the town hall in the upper village that that's my opinion it is just it's just there precisely for that, you know, as opposed to fronting buildings on 196. Um, if you can create that, you know, that feel and, and you know, a long monument place right behind the town hall, I think it would be wonderful. It seems to me like that is the location where what the comprehensive plan envisioned could most likely occur. Just so I totally point. agree with that. But to do that, you're not allowing fast food restaurants and single story, single use things, right? Right. So that's where I'm having a problem. I agree with you. That's what we want to get. What we wanted the cap plan, plan, but I don't think adding those uses gets us that. No, but you have all of this area to do that in. <laughs> There's so right. much parking right. lot right. here that that can right. happen. So that's why I'm arguing don't extend Topsom Fair Mall down Monument Place. Mm -hmm. Correct. No, I agree and, with that. If, but we don't put those uses in Main Street. <laughs> or oh, no, 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 no. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. I what she so said was... is, yeah, ex exclude the suburban storefront from the upper village. Okay. Yeah. That's easy. Got it. <laughs> okay. Approval. Yep. Um, okay. And then what about in the Crooker District? Are we assuming that Crooker District is going to definitely be um, an MPD? I would, I'm assuming that, but I don't know if I'm right. I would assume that. Yes. And that's what it was mainly written for, um, is to give them that flexibility to kind of lay it out and get it approved and then to go building by building. So right now it's allowed with planning board approval. Um, and I think this could be another way to sort of look at this is um, the same sort of thing. Maybe let's take a step back and talk about Topsom Fair Mall yeah. and whether or not you want it to have, you know, just allow it by right in that location or to um, require planning board approval in that location. Any thoughts from the committee? Did I go ahead? Conditional use type question, and that's where we are, right? You're adding that in there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's with, with approval, yeah, but it's not by right. And the question is should we in the Trops and Fair Mall area allow the suburban storefront by right? Um, I think it should in both areas, but that's my opinion. Both, both areas in the Crooked District as well? Not in the upper village. Right. Mm. Yeah. 
I mean, that's what's in Topsom Fair Mall right now. So. I think it makes sense, certainly in Topsom Fair Mall to have it there, right? How many, how many acres is the uh, Parker site? 57, yeah. It's a lot of area. I mean, it seems like that that is an area that could absorb a suburban storefront uh, very easily in comparison to Upper Main Street. And at the same time, it's, I mean, it's such a beautiful opportunity for um, a number of other building types and for some open space and gathering space and, um, I guess my worry would be, would allowing it by right, would we end up having the Crooker district be dominated by the suburban storefront? Yes, this is my concern, Susan, that I feel like if we allow it, and even if we say planning board approval, which will become like conditional use, which always gets a yes, that it is exactly like the Topson Fair Mall. And I think the comprehensive plan is intending to make it different than that. So I think that the zoning needs to be different than that, in my opinion, or the cheapest option is what's going to happen there. It is one way of dealing with this to uh, eliminate a single story building. In other words, uh, hypothetically, a Panera with residential above it, or something like that. That may be completely uh, unreal. No, it happens all the time. <laughs> but that that would uh, address the issue of character uh, that Angela brought up earlier, or could. Yeah, and that's that's what the traditional storefront building is. So that's the building type that they would use to do that. Um, Didn't you had you had a suburban storefront? There were two types. One was a single story, and one was two stories. If I remember that uh, that page. Um, no, it was just it was the traditional storefront. Yeah, yeah, is a two story building. It doesn't, um, you know, it still allows side yard parking. A, a narrow side yard parking. So I, I feel like um, in the Crooker district, it, I, I hear at least Susan and Angela, let's not let's not do this because it does put the planning board in a position of, of you know reviewing something like that. Um, and I think the clarity of the comprehensive plan says don't don't do this. Yeah, don't create another Topsy Fair Mall. Don't mm -hmm. even. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, but before we move on, does anybody disagree with that take? Well, is your take saying you're going to take it completely out of the cooker zone and it's not going to be allowed? Is that what you're saying? I'm just asking. Yes. I would disagree with that because I think that that, that I think it ought to be an option in in the plan development. Should could it come out so that it's attractive? I don't know. But I just hate to I hate to outlaw it. I'm gonna have to abide by what the group says, but I'm, I'm just you asked if anybody has a different right. opinion. No, that's right. And the thing is, I guess, is there a way to address what Angela and I are speaking to in terms of that concern? That, that we could lead with the suburban storefront. We don't want that. Is there a way to make sure that although it's allowed, it's going to be mixed use? It's going to fit in with a walkable area that, that, that isn't like the Thompson Fair Mall. Is, is there a way to create the requirements such that that building is not a replica of even parts of the Topson Fair Mall. Yes. Go ahead. Marlboro, one of the things they did with any drive through was they made sure it was no more than 50% of the building. In other words, they, they didn't allow like a Kentucky Fried Chicken a lot, mm. but they allowed um, a, a Starbucks if it was less 
50% or less of the building for a drive-through. So just, I'm just saying that's something we might want to look at where you you didn't, I don't like the looks of just a standalone Starbucks in there. And I don't see it, I don't see it ever fitting in right. the crooker. But there might be a scenario where you've got part of a building that might be part of a two-story building. Now, in other words, the one that we did with the Starbucks in, in Scarborough was a two-story building. Um, the bank, uh, yeah, I think it was a bank, drive-through bank was half of the bottom floor, and the top floor was uh, offices. It wasn't residential, it was, it was office, but it was. And specifically speaking to this, Joe has looked at page 2-12, it's figure 2J, and it is the bourbon storefront height. Yep, and so that's a two-story building, right? Well, this is illustrated to show the two story in combination with the one story. Um, but the way that this is written is there's no way to I mean, I think Andy had a Andy had a comment. Can we let him? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh my two cents on drive throughs is that I think we've got enough of them in Topton Fair Mall. I would love to see those completely outlawed in the development of Crooker. Yeah, so that I mean, I think that's another that's another part of it. The, so the suburban storefront would allow it, but it wouldn't require it. Obviously, I think that the big difference here between the traditional storefront, which is this one, and the suburban storefront is that the suburban storefront does not require that second story. So one of the things that we could do, um, I think, you know, everything that you're talking about is is with is a, currently allowed. Um, but what we could do is limit the amount of suburban storefront in Crooker. Um, so in the MPD, we could say that you can only do so much, and it has to be located you know, on the front part of the development or something like that, um, so that it would, you know, be, again, primarily two stories everywhere, but it would allow some flexibility of single story. What if I, that sounds better. I'm, I'm limiting the amount. Um, and is there a way to limit the drive-through? I mean, the, the point of yeah, I mean, because that is in a sense in the center of town, it offers, even though it's a very large area, 57 acres, it it offers the possibility of lots of wonderful walkable stuff. And that's the intent. Yeah, yeah, that's the intent. Um, so drive-throughs are the opposite of that. Right, That's that was what I was getting at with my comment is that, drive throughs are encouraging vehicle traffic, whereas, you know, we want to discourage that and encourage more walkability. Right. You know, and you know uh, I'll just use an example. Don't, again, I don't know what the quadrant's going to look like. I don't think anybody does, but what if, what if a bank's in, in, in the center of that area, you want a bank, most banks are going to want some some type of drive through, and some of them are very discreet. I, I just hate to outlaw them. Um, but I mean, if that's what's decided, that's what's decided. But I'm just saying that there are some creative ways of that traffic issue, Andy, that you're talking about. Um, yeah, I, I agree. There's probably ways that it can be done tastefully, um, but we would just have to have some sort of control over that. Yeah, I think by limiting the, limiting the, you know, percentage or portion that, you know, could be, you know, allocated to that. So you don't end up with an area that has, you know, you know, five or six different ones, you know, just one on top of the other, you know, right. You know, right. So again, if we limit, um, if we limit the suburban storefront, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find a, a drive through that I wanted to show you. That um that would that could limit um the uh 
that could limit the the number of drive throughs too. Um, if we limit the store, suburban storefront, I just wanted to show you this is a um, a, a fast food restaurant. Um, so let me see if I can. Can you see my screen? Yes. So there's there's. Good. All right. Sorry. It's kind of moving faster than I can handle. Yeah, don't worry. Um, here we go. Stop. Um, one, everybody hang in for just an extra 10 minutes here to mm -hmm. yeah, five ten or fifteen. Okay, that's what the front of that looks like along the street. And then it has parking and a drive through behind. Okay. So the drive through is back here. So you basically you pull in, you can see the see all the cars stacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You know, and they come out. So we can do that um, for the drive throughs. Um, we could do it for all of the drive throughs. Um, I think that that gets into a whole discussion that's about how how to control the design of a drive through. And I don't know. That's probably beyond your scope, uh, but maybe it's something that should be addressed. No, we often put that design in as an accessory structure um, regulation. So the drive throughs must be located either on the back. Um, sometimes we say in okay. the back or the interior side. Yeah. Um, OK. And, you know, it's easily done. <clears throat> that addresses appearance. I don't think it addresses Andy's concern about uh, about traffic, uh, automobile traffic versus uh, pedestrian traffic, because you still have all those cars coming in and out. Um, I agree with Andy Sturgeon that we shouldn't eliminate the uh, the possibility of a drive through, but if we could somehow control. Uh, I don't know how many of them there are, or what you know, what percentage of, and I don't know how to do that. But um, the idea that an opportunity like the Crooker uh, site could be could become, in uh, in even a small part, looking like Thompson Fair Mall would be a, a real missed opportunity. So just just to be clear, nothing that's in Thompson Fair Mall. Um, very little would meet this code, um, which I think is really important to restate. So the strip centers that have the parking lots in front of them would need to be sort of either L-shaped or sort of sideways so that there's actual um, frontage and windows and, and such um, along the main streets. There isn't a building type um, that's modeled after Topsom Fair Mall. So I think what we've come down is a concern to limit both the suburban storefront and drive-throughs and to take care with the design of those limited elements too. <laughs> Focusing on walkable areas and focusing away from attracting vehicular traffic on the crooker site yep got it i think i think that that so. will 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 make it um will will limit it with the mpd um and i'll limit it here as well just so there it's clear um, and we're removing it from the upper village, the suburban storefront, and we're making it by right in Topsom Fair Mall, the suburban storefront. And then as far as drive throughs are concerned, it will only be allowed with the suburban storefront building type in the Topsom center zones. And we will add design standards to the drive throughs as well. I mean, you're you're right. There's not a lot we can do about the stacking. Um, there's not a lot that we can do about the activity level because of drive throughs. But if you don't have very many drive throughs um, and we make them do it on the back side in particular locations, it just limits how many are done. 
Right. Okay. Um, how, so do we just have an hour? That was my plan. Okay. I think we have another, say, 15 minutes, as long as everybody can hang in. I do need to leave at quarter after, but... Um, well, if we could talk about the workshop warehouse building, which I think is is probably the next big issue. Um, right, you know, we we actually pulled out most of the area from the Topsom Center zones that the workshop warehouse building would apply to. Right now, we allow it um, with approval in the annex, which we said we're removing. Um, and we've allowed it in the Crooker district because a part of what they were talking about doing was kind of on the backside um, industrial type development. And we were trying to apply some design standards um, to it. Um, so I think this, I would propose let the, um, the concrete, I don't know what it is. It's like signs, isn't it? Like concrete monuments or something like that. Um, that's now in the annex. Precast. 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 Yeah, precast. Okay. Yep. Um, so I would propose, and you can tell me um, that that just be a continuing, I don't know how you feel about this, but non conforming use in that location um, can continue forever as it is. Um, it seems kind of out of place to me to make something specific where this is the only location really that we're talking about it. So to zone as though it weren't there and it would just remain as a non-conforming use. Forever. Mm -hmm. As long as it as long as they want. <laughs> any any opposition? Well I have a question. I, I generally agree with this Leslie. But I'm also thinking of um, the owners of precast. So they have their business. It can stay as it is. It's non-conforming as long as they're there. But if they sell it, it can also stay as it is. It just if it's redeveloped, it can't be redeveloped into another light industrial. And usually, Kirk, is if, if, if it goes vacant for a year or more, then they would lose that ability to keep doing it. Is that the way that's currently written? No, we typically establish some time frame that constitutes a evidence of abandonment of the use in which time at which point it couldn't be reestablished and limit limitations or prohibitions, frankly, on expansion or further intensification of the use. But yeah, we would typically include those controls generally for non-conforming uses. Yeah. Well, I I think I think this makes sense but i do think it's really important that we talk to the owners and make sure they understand this and that they know that we're not saying <laughs> we want to get rid of pre precast yeah yeah i'll be having that discussion ah. <laughs> i'll be applied not only precast but wicked joe's and uh mm -hmm. Is well, Wicked Joe's under, under light industrial? It probably is. Yeah, you're right. right. Wicked Joe's too. I would think so. And so I guess that would that would be, you know, my question there is, you know, but if Precast Main were to relocate and Wicked Joe's wanted to expand into that area, would there be anything wrong with that? But it, it we're saying with what we're discussing right now, it no, it may not be permitted. So when we originally started talking about this code, um, I'm sorry, I was just taking a look at the Wicked Joe's building. Um, it, there there is an artisan use, artisan manufacturing use that Wicked Joe's would follow fall within. Um, that would be allowed anywhere. So it's the the pieces, the piece that's an issue is the truck traffic and the design of the building and the loading docks. If this building, um, you know, I, I don't know if this is the right way for it to, or if it's the other street frontage, but if it were to have the coffee shop that it has right within it, more on the street side, it, they could pretty much, we could ride it so they could pretty much do any of this behind it. Um, Although we wouldn't want it to be 
we wouldn't want to allow that in every upper village situation. Right. So we would have to put some constraints on it. Right now, they've turned theirs into more of a complex. They've got three different buildings now. So I could see them potentially wanting to maybe add another building or something. Over here. Add another building, or they just have to stick with the ones they have. And the G the um, Google Maps doesn't really show what they're doing right now. They've got, they converted two other buildings to their use. This this way or this way? What kind of both areas you just had? One was one was a two story brick structure that was a former army recruiting thing, and the other one was a marine barracks. Uh, at one point, the base fire station that they have like a tea manufacturing facility in that now. I mean, it's possible. I wonder, should we just take these out? Because they're not uh, not necessarily abutting anything. You know, they're not, it, it wouldn't be creating a hole. They would be, um, I mean, I think we should look at that because if they've expanded into this parcel, you know, it might make sense to just wrap oh like this. I think that's what we've been suggesting. Yep. Okay, so, so pulling all three of these parcels out of the annex and putting, taking them out of Topsom Center zones and then pulling these three parcels into the upper village is what I was proposing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Everybody. I mean, the, the three parcels joining the upper village zone, that's clear to me. But the decision to remove the all of the territory that's occupied by Precast of Maine and Wicked Joes and remove that from this project, if the group thinks that's the right decision, I mean, thinking into the future, you know, and we're not we're not designing this just based on what's there now. Um, let me just think about what's what zone would they be going into? I guess and how would they be regulated? Yeah, can you hear Julie? I think it's the um, the the limited industrial that was created a while ago along um, Augusta, old Augusta, right? That was a pretty um, intensive process. Yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely think that those three parcels are more like those. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, we we did have an EX zone or a zoning district that we had created that was meant to be used around that work workshop warehouse that we kind of got rid of. Um, because these were, we, we didn't want to step on this process that was pretty intensive. Um, shall we? What do you think, planner? <laughs> that makes sense to me then if it's, if there's industrial right there and they're, they're industrial now, if they're conforming now, we can keep them in that same grouping, I guess I would say. So just, so take them out of the Topsom Center zone process and allow them to remain as light industrial for the time being. Go ahead, Joe. Limited industrial. Limited industrial, yeah. I was curious how big, if anybody knows how big the precast of the main site is. 17 acres. Really? Wow. It's a big one. Again, it's part of Crooked, just so you know. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Right. Interesting. Part of Crooker as a business, or is it it's yeah. not included in, as uh, a catalyst site, a Crooker catalyst site? No. 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 The long term would be able to move it out of there, but we don't know. That's no. okay. depends on some other things. Yeah. And you can well, always zone it in later. You know. hmm. I guess my yeah, my feeling is I'd, I'd be tempted to move that move all the parcels into the upper village zone eventually but if the upper village requirements are so restrictive that they won't 
allow for expansion of the existing uses, which I think are fine in there, then then that's where I said, well, maybe now is now is not the time until. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. So it Wait. sounds like toward removal, except for those three parcels that are going to join the upper village. Any thoughts against that lien in opposition to the lien? <laughs> okay, there you go, Leslie. Okay, sounds good. Um, so next steps, I have other things to discuss. So could we do it at the next workshop? <laughs> um, how does that how does that work? Is your workshop the end of the month? No, oh, our workshop, I mean, you, we could have time at the regular meeting if you would like, but we have the third Tuesday at four every month. And if we real if we think ahead that we need more time, like an hour and a half or two hours, we can plan on that, I think, um, with the group. I think we we four o'clock is a good start time, but we could expand. So looking at the third Tuesday in what are we looking at? March. So that would be March 21st. Yeah, I wonder too. I don't know how you all feel about this, but Joe had some questions about some very specific dimensions, and I'm wondering if I could talk to him about that, and then we could respond on the comments, and that might kind of handle some of those. Would that be okay? It's fine with me. I, I didn't realize I responded to the questions. I, I think what might make sense is for me to go through all of those. Uh, and see what you had to have to say, but I'd be glad to, if you think it'd be more effective just to talk about it. That's fine. I didn't go through all of them, but I can I can go back. I, I sort of was running out of time, and so some yeah. of them I just said we'll just discuss. So I'll go back and I'll add in some you know where some of those dimensions came from, um, and everybody can look at them. They'll be on the same document that you all commented on. And if you want to bring them up at the next meeting, we can still discuss them. But I was kind of hoping maybe that might shrink the number of um, discussion points down a bit. Uh, the, the vast majority of them were simply uh, items that I fully understand uh, the implications of. Uh, the only one that comes to mind uh, that I disagreed with uh, was the four and twelve pitch for uh, for roofs. Uh, and I, there might have been one or two others, but mostly it was clarification issues. Okay, well let's let's talk about that then offline. Um, I'll I'll email you. Maybe yeah. we can figure something else. Mark, um, and, and and your responses on the live document may be sufficient. Um, I just wanted to clarify something that came up earlier in the meeting, um, spoken by Scott. The planning board is in this process to comment and question as much as you like. This is a live document. And just like in the earlier project direction memo, um, there's no requirement. You know, you have plenty of work on your flow already, but it's an opportunity and you are invited um, to be part of, you know, looking this over um, and commenting and asking questions, um, you know, as you like. Does, does that make sense, Leslie, for that process to continue? The, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, cer certainly uh, plan to, and now that it's updated for <laughs> take a look, I know where, um, we're slated to have a workshop uh, with with folks on this on the 23rd of March, um, and we've been given that deadline by Julie to to get our comments in there and uh, right. tackle things. So so she's cracking the whip on us. My my comment was more towards us being kind of invited to this meeting. Um, you know, we I I wasn't sure what what the uh, if it was more of just a hey guys come join us or if there was a uh, a, a, a specific reason so that, that's where i came from earlier Thanks. i appreciate that the the how we have 
handled all of our meetings actually is, you know, there's a few minutes at the beginning of regular monthly meetings, but if there's something as the meeting pro progresses that someone from the public has taken the time to come, we're happy to have questions. We, not to push us off our agenda, but this is very much front and center in terms of our work with the planning board. So you're, anything goes in these workshop sessions. Glad to have both you and Dan um, here today. All right, so it sounds like- And Andy, Andy's on the planning board now. <laughs> right. You, you, you got him on there. You now have a CPEC spy. <laughs> Magnificent. <laughs> May it continue. Um, so it sounds like we've got a date in uh, March the 21st. We'll do this again. Um, I'm seeing nods from both Kirk and Leslie. Yay. Sure. Um, busy one. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. This thank you. It was a good discussion. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see everyone. All right. Bye. See the recording has stopped. I'm Not glad you said that. Wow. Uh, about their their uh, planning board participating. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the,